everybody, thank you for joining us. Today is the 27th of July, Monday, and we are going to talk about COVID-19 regulations in the South African workplace. And joining us today to actually help us understand better about this would be, give me one second, Rachma Solomon. Rachma is a, the founder and director of Vortex Design Solutions an architectural interior design company. She has a bachelor's of technology in interior design. She has 15 years of experience in the application of architectural interior design within the private, retail and commercial sectors. Uh, thank you, Rachma, for joining us today. Okay, and, you, okay, and then we also have Wilbur Berger. He's registered with the South African Institute of Occupational Safety and Health known as SIOSH, and is a level three technical member. He holds a diploma in, in safety management. He has 13 years of experience in occupational health and safety, and has worked within the aviation, warehousing and admin building operational risk sectors. Thank you, Olga. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we've already received some questions from um, different business owners and managers. So we'll start by going through those prepared questions and uh, Rahman Wilber will answer them. We'll also be uh, sending out a download where they'll actually give further information on top of what they've um, said today and possibly with any links that's required. And then if, we, if time allows for it afterwards, we'll open up conversations to everybody um, that's on the webinar to sort of ask them questions and yeah, we'll take it from there. Okay, so the first question, Rob, is for you. What are the COVID-19 plan requirements from small business, medium business, and large businesses, as well as what are the guidelines for screening employees and customers? Oh, hi. Thank you, Terrell. Um, well, the first thing that has to be done when, as soon as the business opened up for um, after the lockdown was to undertake a risk assessment. And uh, this risk assessment is just developing a plan outlining all the me uh, protective measures for the workplace and employees and when a plan has to include the measures such as screening, your social distancing, cleaning protocols, etc. You must establish a COVID officer to be appointed that is responsible for carrying out this plan and um, the document um, has to be readily available so that if an inspector comes onto site and asks for the, doc uh, the document that it can be presented to them if they uh, to see all the um, procedures that have been laid out. Okay. Um, elaborating on the screening, <laughs> the guidelines that must be adhered to come from the Department of Health and at the start of a shift and prior to ending a shift, employees will be asked whether they have experienced a sudden onset of any of the following symptoms, which is a cough, a sore throat, shortness of breath, or having a fever. And then they'll also be asked if they have any of the uh, additional symptoms, which is body aches, uh, loss of smell, loss of taste, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or fatigue. And this is not compulsory, but it is recommended that a temperature check be done. So that, uh, and Okay. Everything is above uh, 38 degrees is considered to be a fever and that person would then fall into the, the you have to self-isolate and not be allowed onto the premises as they would constitute the risk um, of possibly being a COVID carrier. Then if a company has more than 500 employees, the risk um, assessment that was conducted must be submitted to the uh, Department of Labor um, for approval as well. Then just for public places, um, all that needs to be ensured is that you must make sure your uh, customers entering your premises must be wearing a mask. Okay. Uh, sanitizer must be available at the entry point and uh, a check had to be done prior to opening of the business to ensure uh, what's the maximum amount of persons allowed within your premises and that you ensure that social distancing is at least 1.5 min uh, meters is maintained at all times. And these are just things that um, are done to ensure that 
we can maintain um, the most amount of um, preparedness and safety for everybody within an area. Okay. Um, I will also be, we will all be compiling a document as well with a lot more detail and um, information that we will be uh, disseminating after um, the webinar. Uh, and there will be a lot more information and links to uh, where all the information can be found as well. Okay, okay, that's great. Thank you, Walter. So that's also why we see some um, retailers just doing sort of the um, screening, not doing full on screening with tracing, writing down numbers. And then in other shops, we see retailers actually just sanitizing hands, checking for masks and monitoring the amount of people coming in and going. Okay, thank you. Our next question, uh, Dachma, this is for you. So what are the practical protocols that businesses can implement in an office environment? So looking at office environments, um, prevention is the name of the game. And from the time that somebody enters the premises, that is where the screening starts. Um, and from the screening point of view, in order to protect the person who's either taking stock of who's coming in or taking temperature, that is where businesses have started putting screens up at cashier desks um, or at reception desks. Mm -hmm. Then also looking at um, when people are taking on door handles, going into different areas, looking at rather leaving those doors open. So whether that's the front door, the back door, um, doors in between canteen spaces and, and frequented spaces. Also, anything where people take on something more than once, so like a fridge or a kettle or an urn, those things need to have wiped down protocols um, every half an hour or every hour that the office manager maintains and takes care of um, to ensure that people are not um, touching it continuously and spreading the germs. Same applies to areas like the print area. And then also with deliveries in an office, that is something that needs to be carefully monitored because we know mm. that um, things have been spread in um, general grocery stores and things like that. The same goes for orders from um, any of our online shops. So there we also encourage if people are getting deliveries to the office, by all means take the deliveries, but don't open it in the office. You know, take it home where you can sanitize it, clean it, um, possibly decant it out of um, the packaging as well because of all the amounts of hands that have touched something when it's in the delivery process. So again, it's, it's looking at every place touch point that someone can touch it more than once mm. and how you can prevent yourself from touching it again, whether that is putting um, baby wipes next door to it, tissues next door to it, um, cleaning it every hour um, and the same with the bathrooms as well. Wherever you can prevent yourself from taking on something more than once, um, and sharing that area with another person, um, that is where we need to put prevention in place. Okay, that sounds great. I mean, you make a very good point about the deliveries. Um, we're all getting tons of things delivered to our offices, to our homes. I've actually never thought of like wiping down those things first off. Yeah, so thanks. Okay, our next question um, is, well, but this one is for you. When employees and members of employees' households test positive for COVID-19, what are the legal requirements business have to follow? And when can the employee return to work after being tested positive? Okay, an employee test positive, if they are at work, um, they need to be isolated immediately um, and then sent home. And a list of persons that have been in direct contact with um, need to be obtained as these people also need to be informed um, to self-isolate as well. Um, it also affects the areas that the person was working in um, that was in prolonged contact because these areas will then need to be deep cleaned uh, before they can be utilized again, which might actually result in a closure of an area or even the business until the area has been sanitized. Um, in the event of it being the family member um, of the employee, only the employee himself ha or herself has to self-isolate okay. um, un unless the person has symptoms. If the person has symptoms and the tracing process begins again and all the employees that were in direct contact with that employee will also need to uh, self-isolate. Um, and then the period for self-isolation actually has decreased from 14 to 10 days. Um, and 
it depends on your symptoms. Um, the period of self-isolation for someone that was asymptomatic is 10 days from conducting the test. Um, if you only had mild cases, um, it is 10 days from symptom on onset. And for people who had severe cases of COVID, it would be 10 days after clinical stability. Okay. And when can the employee just return to work after he's tested positive? 10 days after? That, that would be oh, 10 days, okay. yeah. So depending okay. on your symptoms, if it was mild, severe, or uh, okay. if you were asymptomatic. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Um, our next question um, is actually a very practical one, um, which I'd love to know the answer to. Uh, Rahma, this one's for you. For those of us within walls and who live in small spaces, what can we do to cut down on the level of noise that carries from inside and outside our houses as this makes its way onto different voice and video calls that we're having? Okay, so the challenge um, we all battle with, um, the one thing is to definitely obviously have the, the best headset that can black, block out the background noise, but if we don't have 3000 rand laying around, um, the nice thing about sound is that it, it usually only um, goes through crevices, so that's under a door, around a window, um, and if we just just in the space that you're going to sit in and have your meeting, make sure all those areas are sealed off and closed off. Um, if you need, if your door possibly um, has gaps around it, pop down to Builder's Warehouse, get some foam strips that you can put around it with a brush strip underneath it. Um, or even if you don't have um, the time to do that, just put a towel underneath the door to again block the, the travel of the sound underneath. Um, okay. that area and then when it comes to sound also sound bounces so if you are sitting in a room with a lot of hard surfaces the wall the ceiling your desk is hard your chair is hard um, look at possibly introducing some soft furnishings into the room so that would be just a, add a rug um, or move if you've got a very important uh, meeting that's got high security mm -hmm. move to a room that's better furnished like a bedroom because the bedding, the curtains will actually catch the sound and block the sound in the folds of the fabric. So even when it comes to big boardrooms, what we normally do um, in high-end boardrooms is we actually add a second layer of curtaining over the blinds that can be closed when they do video conferencing, just because undoubtedly it's still the best way to block sound at the moment. Well, so much actually goes into like the thought around that. Hence why we need an interior designer. <laughs> okay, our next question um, is around what are the options for sanitizing an area that's been exposed to a positive COVID-19 case? As also, is fogging mandatory? And please do tell us, Wilbur, what is fogging? Okay, fogging is basically... Um, it's a technique where a blow, the chemical liquid is inserted into a blower, which disperses the liquid as a, uh, as a spray, which resembles a fog. And it's basically utilized by a lot of companies because it's a lot faster than deep cleaning. Um, it covers a larger area. Um, mm -hmm. And however, it is not mandatory. Um, it is a business's choice if they want to do that as fogging is quite pricey. Um, the mandatory um, for, uh, the, sorry, according to the law, all that needs to be done if there is a positive case is that your area needs to be deep cleaned. Um, and they recommend actually just using normal soap and water to wipe down the area. Uh, but for deep clean, it would not just be the table and surfaces. You'd actually clean the floor, you'd clean the walls, you'd clean the ventilation. Um, the, everything in the surrounding area has to be uh, clean and then once you've done the soap and water um, to then apply uh, a disinfectant afterwards um, and it has to be something with at least 70 percent alcohol or a one in 1000 ppm of chlorine um, solution uh, that is just then to ensure okay. um, as much of the virus would uh, can be killed um, and that is the Basically, that comes from the World Health Organization and uh, South Africa follows that guideline as well. Okay, okay, great, okay, great. Um, okay, 
the next question then that we have prepared is for Rahma. Rahma, in your opinion, how do you see the uses of commercial and residential property actually changing over time? So there have been um, quite a few surveys that have gone out since people have started working from home. Um, there is a mixed feeling about um, what is more productive. People being able to get up in the morning, get straight into work, not losing the time in the traffic with commuting and actually gaining those two hours mm. to then put back into, um, into business. So that's been a very positive thing that's come out. On the opposite side, um, some people are finding it difficult to focus. Either it's too quiet if they don't have anybody at home and they need um, the hustle and bustle of their colleagues, they need engagement um, with their peers um, and their superiors. Um, and we almost find that going forward, there needs to be a balance to accommodate um, both all different types of people and how they work best. So there's also um, been a big movement to looking at uh, the co-working spaces mm. that have popped up over the years and whether that should be more um, community based and possibly allow a space where people could go and work if they need quiet and they need the, the Wi-Fi and they need, um, you know, just somewhere to print and focus. Um, or they can work from home um, and maybe just go into the office once a week or twice a week. And so in that way, everybody can balance the numbers between home, between co-working spaces and between um, their standard business areas um, while still managing to get maximum productivity out of everyone. So your residential property is going to be become more sort of a partial business hub and commercial uh, property would again also, you know, lend itself to more of a hot desking scenario going mm. forward. Mm. And this is also all great for our environment because less traffic means less smog, less carbon monoxide kind of thing. And yeah, I'm loving the two hours I've gained. <laughs> okay, well, but this one is for you. I own a restaurant and was wondering if there are filtration devices that can be installed in aircons to purify the air. Uh, yes, they are. Um, it's basically um, the simplest solution is um, you can just ask the one, your aircon technician um, to change the amount of fresh air that is pulled in from mm. the aircon because most of the aircons do have that uh, capability already, and you can they can actually just adjust the setting um, to pull more fresh air into uh, into the building to create uh, better ventilation uh, and then there are a lot quite a few different technologies that can be used to purify the air the most common one used is filtration um, you do get different types of filters uh, which are have different levels of effectiveness um, there are certain systems where you can actually put a secondary filter in to add to the efficiency of the filter um, and then other types of systems are um, irradiation you can use thermal sterilization. They've got ozone um, devices that are all utilized for uh, purifying the air. But the only requirement needed um, is that your office setting or has to just have uh, good ventilation. They don't uh, distinguish what type of ventilation needs to be in place as long as the ventilation is effective. This is so interesting what you're saying. I mean, I especially think of all the restaurants um, that are sort of losing out right now. And that usually, you know, they have the small spaces. So to know that they can use the existing aircon system to help mitigate the spread is fantastic. Tell me the other, the other um, types of um, methods that you mentioned for purifying the air. Are they available in South Africa? Can you include some of those links sort of to to places of purchase or for more information in the download. Yeah, I can add those um, details. Okay, okay, cool, thanks. Um, Rahma, staying on the restaurant subject, but the next one is for you. So within the restaurant industry, we usually try to pack in as many tables and seats together as possible. What can we um, now do with the spaces that would encompass the regulations, but still take into account sort of the aesthetic and the, the vibe that you wanted to create in the restaurant? Okay, so we look at restaurants today. Um, a lot of them are already, some of them, 
them have got built booth seats in. Some of them have got movable um, chairs and tables in it. Some of them have got benches in it. Um, and suppliers have come out with quite ingenious um, clear perspex screens that can also be put on if you can picture a long bench between groups of people so that you can sit two, two, two and have the screen between uh -huh. you alongside you. Also with booth seating as well, there are screens that can be suspended from the ceiling um, or fixed to the booth seats. Mm. And we're looking at restaurants possibly still being able to accommodate um, people but not to the capacity that we are used to before. You know, we crowded eight people around a table because the whole family's going going out for dinner now. So um, we, we want to encourage restaurants. Yes, we are trying to um, get back up and running, um, get their revenue back up there, but they also need to be the judge of how many people are yeah. currently in their space at any given time. And, and just make sure that the, the idea is for ventilation to always be free, clear and flowing. Because we're all talking um, when you eat and you have to take your mask off. So the droplets that are coming out of everybody's mouths at any given time inside a restaurant setting, you don't want that to start building up in the space mm -hmm. um, and then clogging, you know, the airflow. So the idea is, number one, make sure that there's very good airflow in the space. And then there are also movable screens that are on wheels that are about 1.6 high that can be wheeled between tables for people to give them additional privacy. Um, and then also, I mean, it's it's not a it's not a difficult um, challenge with technology that we have at the moment is to look at a booking system where mm -hmm. restaurants can give everybody, you know, two hours or three hours. Um, at their seat and so everybody knows there's a two o'clock shift there's a two thirty um there's a three thirty shift you know every one and a half mm -hmm. two or three hours whatever the restaurant feels that they are comfortable with providing cleaning and then having a rotation of people so that they can also control and possibly even plan um getting back on their feet um, and increasing their revenue as they go forward okay and i mean just combining what you both have said i mean these, these are ways that these restaurants can actually go back into business because I think that uh, taking into account the health measures that need to be in place right now to mitigate the risk of the, um, the virus, simply because we know that the virus is going to be here for quite a while and we need to adapt to that so much. Um, let me just go to the next question. Thank you. Okay, um, my employees are still removing their masks, uh, sitting and standing too close to each other and generally not complying with the new rules. What can I do to improve the adherence to these rules? Also, the employees in my factory um, have workstations three to five meters apart from each other. Can they remove their masks at their workstations? What were this one's for you? Hi. Um... I'll answer the second question first. Um, masks are mandatory, even at the workplace, and this is mandated by law as it's still deemed a public place. Um, so they still have to wear their masks mm. even at work unless they are eating or drinking. Mm. Um, and then the adherence to the rules, uh, in my opinion, is actually, uh, I think it's very important based uh, on the employee education. Um, if your employees informed uh, about the risks and the dangers of the of the virus, that I do think that there will be more compliance, and letting them understand the importance of the uh, pandemic and making the the rules and the regulations uh, the business has undertaken um, readily available to them will actually um, also promote a, a more what's the word I'm looking for a more harmonious environment as they will actually understand exactly why the business is mm. doing what it's doing. Mm. Um, and this also, maybe having suggestions for the, for the employees to give suggestions if they can improve anything, they might be a good idea. This also has a buying mentality where if they feel that they're part of the process, that they actually, um, they believe more in following the rules and procedures. Another method is just to have morning talks when you know, employees come into the business. Mm. Just again, reiterate, reiterating why uh, something is important, why we're doing this. And also let them know that it's for their own safety that these rules are being implemented. Mm -hmm. um, 
On the other end of the scale, you can uh, take disciplinary action because um, these rules are mandated um, because as soon as the risk policy has been drawn up, as well as the, the legislation from government, um, these are actually then become mandatory. And in terms of the OSH Act, employees also do have a responsibility to ensure that they do not place the safety of other uh, employees uh, at risk or other customers or persons. And by not complying with a lot of these rules, you do place your fellow colleagues or your customers at risk by maybe exposing them to the virus. And the OSHAC held them liable for that as well. Okay, okay. Not always something we want to do, but if you have to walk down that path, absolutely great. Um, thank you for that. And our very last prepared question that we have uh, is for Rahma before we, just for a few minutes, um, open it up to the floor. And that is, Rahma, what are the interior design trends that you see coming our way? So um, we've seen things start moving already um, in terms of the way doors are used, um, different types of ways of opening it with your feet um, and your elbow, for example, as opposed to taking on it with your hand. Mm -hmm. Um, people have become very aware of their surroundings. When it comes to access control, um, people are looking at possibly using cards as opposed to finger biometrics because um, that's, again, first line of defense wherever we can put in prevention. Looking at door closers that would open and close the door for you, those have also started becoming popular again. Usually they were just used in, you know, very high-end offices, but now we're looking at anywhere where there is um, a lot of traffic flow, um, that where people need to, you know, be kept safe and safety comes first, you know, the, the money is negligible, mm. implementing that. Um, even in lift areas and foyers, um, where the security guard is actually in control of which lift gets chosen, instead of people having to push buttons all the time um, and automating items like that. And then I think for the biggest thing that we're looking going forward is, when people start settling into the balance of what's best for their business and how people work from home or in the office, there is still the level of security that needs to be protected in a company with regards to your law firms or your financial institutions or any big corporates. Um, and looking at providing, I would call it safe spaces, um, where some areas of the office are maybe um, cleaned more often than other areas, or people with comorbidities that are really required to be um, in the workplace, they need it there for training of other staff members, they need it there for more hands-on work, to provide them with spaces that is, that is um, you know, a safe space for them to work. We're not many people frequent possibly that side of the office. We believe that looking at a long-term solution um, for safety and hygiene um, is definitely going to go a long way to things that we call clean building solutions um, in the future. It sounds exciting, all the changes that's being made. Okay, um, thank you very much to Rahman Wilber for joining us today, as well as to our other attendees just for making the time. A download will be available that will give you a lot more detail about what was discussed today. And please um, feel free to contact us if there are any more questions. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Pleasure. Bye. Bye-bye.